What I can say is that we have been asked to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and, and these guys and gals will do it tonight. And this whole project began nearly 20 years ago when Helen and I, I think she was in mid-middle school, uh, met at a jazz dinner. And in the course of the conversation, it came up that both of us were churchgoers, which was a rare state of being in the group. Uh, and it started a friendship, uh, which uh, eventually, eventually Helen said a poem of, of mine to music. And then she asked if we would want to do a jazz song cycle. Uh, we got a grant, so then we had to figure out what a jazz song cycle was. Uh, and so uh, we collaborated on this in several ways. Sometimes I wrote a, a poem which she set to music. Uh, sometimes she would uh, call me over the phone and she'd play a rhythm and say, could I write something to this rhythm? Sometimes we had, had a melody. And uh, you'll see uh, some of the, uh, of the results. Um, we're going to begin, as we do the album, with a poem in honor of jazz. It's called Meet Me at the Lighthouse. Those of you who are jazz fans will need no notes for this. But those of you who are not, let me give you a quick background. The Lighthouse is the last great West Coast jazz club. Uh, if you've seen La La Land, three scenes of La La Land take place uh, in the Lighthouse. It's where the, the Lighthouse's house band is called the Lighthouse All-Stars. And in this poem, I give a bunch of names. Jazz is like Renaissance painting. The, uh, the, the beloved uh, artists were known by their first name, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo. In this case, you'll hear a bunch of first names, and they are Jerry Mulligan, Cannonball Adderley, Hampton Hawes, Stan Getz, Chet Baker, and Art Pepper. These are the, among the, the greatest jazz artists that the West Coast produced. There's one literary uh, allusion that's Tartarus, which is the abyss in hell. I should say that everybody in this poem, except for me, is dead. So, and eventually even that problem will be solved. Uh, it's written, the person I address it to is my cousin Phil, who I used to go to the lighthouse with because they never carded us when we were young, uh, which didn't matter because their drinks were watered down. Uh, and so it, and he died early. So let's begin with meet me at the lighthouse. Meet me at the lighthouse in Hermosa Beach, that shabby nightclub on its foggy pier. Let's aim for the summer of 71, when all of our friends were young and immortal. I'll pick up the cover charge and find us a table and order a round of their watery drinks. Let's savor the smoke of that sinister century, perfume of tobacco and the tangy salt air. The club will be quiet, just ghosts uh, at the bar. So you, old friend, won't feel out of place. You need a night out from that dim subdivision. Tell Dr. Death you'll be home before dawn. The club has booked the best talent in Tartarus. Jerry, Cannonball, Hampton, and Stan, with Chet and Art, those gorgeous greenhorns, the swinging masters of our West Coast soul. Let the all-stars shine from that Jerry-built stage. Let their high notes shimmer above the cold waves. Time and the tide are counting the beats. Death, the collector, is keeping the tab. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here at the Catholic Imagination Conference. Like probably all of you in the room, I'm a huge fan of this gentleman, Dana Joya. Please give it up again. <laughs> Yes, we met at a state dinner at the White House, and he, I got there before him, and it said Dana Joya, and I said, wow, what an interesting last name, four vowels in a row. She must be really interesting. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then when I met him, uh, I was like, wow, okay, and then she discover he, he's a poet. I never met a living poet before. And I had to, you know, being the good churchgoer, I had to admit, you know, I don't really enjoy reading poetry. And he said, why? Tell me. And I said, well, I just don't like feeling like I'm the only person who doesn't understand what the poem really means. And Dana, I think, has a gift like Wynton Marsala does with jazz and Leonard Bernstein did with classical, just bringing, making poetry come alive in a way that feels real and honest and authentic. And he got me to start reading poetry again. And then the whole thing with writing music to his poems and other poems, it's just been a wonderful adventure. So it's such an honor always to share the stage with him and these amazing musicians I'm so happy to have with me tonight. <laughs> Please give it up for John Ellis on saxophone and flute. On drums, Professor Quincy Davis. <laughs> I love the fluidity of a jazz band because originally um, another bassist was supposed to come, but something came up. And then I asked Quincy, do you know any you know, great bass players in my home state? I'm originally from Houston, actually. And you know, he, yes, thank you. <laughs> even though Dallas is our rival city, but I'll let that go for now. <laughs> um, he said, yes, check out this young man. He just graduated from North Texas State, UNT up in Denton, and he's doing an amazing job. Give it up for Guillermo Lu Lopez on the bass. <laughs> so that piece is called Convergence, which is inspired by Meet Me at the Lighthouse, which I feel like is almost science fiction. You meet through time, through space, through just different mediums, and uh, thank you for that. And now we're going to continue with one of my favorites of Dana's poems. I'll let him tell you about it. One of the joys of collaboration is that you end up creating things that you just wouldn't have done otherwise, and in the case of a style you wouldn't do otherwise. The first lyric I wrote for Helen, uh, we just wanted to see what could you set this to music, was another L.A. poem. It's about, L.A.'s not mentioned in it, but L.A. is where the beautiful people go because they can make a living and achieve fame through their beauty. It's about the power that beauty gives you and what happens to it. It's called Pity the Beautiful. Well, I was going to ask, I, I was wondering when you are going to, I was wondering when she was going to introduce the singers, but she handed me the mic, and when Helen tells me. No, no, I'm sorry. We have a wonderful vocalist to sing Dana's beautiful words, e equally beautiful, Christy DeShiel on vocals. Good. I, I, I sort of thought it was going to be a dramatic mid, uh, mid music when they got, now, Christy, okay. Pity the beautiful. Pity the beautiful, the dolls and the dishes, the babes with big daddies granting their wishes. Pity the pretty boys, the hunks and Apollos, the golden lads whom success always follows, the hotties, the knockouts, the tens out of ten, the drop dead gorgeous the great leading men. Pity the faded, the bloated, the blousy, the paunchy Adonis whose luck's gone lousy. Pity the gods, no longer divine. Pity the night, the stars lose their shine. La, la, da, la, la.
You know, one day, uh, Helen called me up, and she asked if I could write words to a rhythm. So she played chords in a recurrent rhythm, and I jotted them down. And this was certainly a poem I would not have written uh, for The New Yorker. Uh, it's written, it's about a lover's argument, and it was, I imagined, in the voice of a woman, and I wasn't disappointed. It's called Too Bad. Uh, too bad, so sad. You're such a fool to make me mad. Romance? No chance. Honey, you lost your turn to dance. Brag, blame, call my name. Don't you know I won't play your game? Star-crossed, storm-tossed. Love your sweet words. Now get lost. In a while, crocodile, your alligator tears just make me smile. Moan, groan, on the phone, you're going to spend tonight alone. <laughs> Too bad, so sad, you're such a fool to make me mad. your turn to
Christy Dashu on the vocals. <laughs> We're now going to do an instrumental selection, but before we do that, can we solve the, the, the low end of the piano is feeding back? I don't know, where's Dennis? Okay, it's not doing it now, thank goodness. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See, Dennis is so awesome, he takes care of the problem before I even tell him to. That's awesome. Um, so this uh, is from, I released two records in 2021, and one of them was my first LP. Oh, by the way, you know, do people in here still listen to CDs? Yes, yes. Oh, well, we have copies of our record, to di record together, Sung With Words, so if you want to get a copy afterwards, come let us know and we can both sign it, so. Um, but this one is called Everybody's Waltz and the feeling behind this piece is about our shared humanity as a people, you know, especially during the pandemic. So, um, so we hope you enjoy Everybody's Waltz, thank you. Thank you. 
I've recently uh, written 
uh, three long psalms to, to Los Angeles. They are borrow features from the psalms, and they, as psalms are, they celebrate or they lament. Uh, and I'm going to read two of them. The first is called the Psalm of the Heights. Uh, if you live in LA, you'll recognize things. If not, it'll seem exotic. Uh, but it all, just imagine that you're standing in the Hollywood Hills, probably right below the Hollywood sign at night in Los Angeles, and you look in the distance, and you gradually look closer down. Uh, for years, I wanted to write a poem about why Los Angeles was beautiful, and so I'm happy to have done this one. Um, Psalm of the Heights. You don't fall in love with Los Angeles until you've seen it from the distance in the dark. Up in the heights of the Hollywood Hills, you can mute the sounds and find perspective. The pulsing anger of the traffic dissipates and our swank, unmanageable metropolis dissolves with all its signage and its sewage until only the radiance remains. That's when the city of angels appears, silent and weightless as a dancer's dream. The boulevards unfold in brilliant lines. The freeways flow like shining rivers. The moving lights stretch into vast and secret shapes, invisible at street level. At the horizon, the city rises into the sky, our demi-galaxy, brighter than the zodiac. Surely our destinies are written in this zodiac, whose courses and conjunctions govern us. Look down and name our fiery constellations, Wilshire, Olympic, Santa Monica, in speeding comets or sleek thunderbirds, we travel the twelve houses of the heavens, ascending Crenshaw, sunset or imperial, locked in our private worlds of lust or laughter. Who will chart the course of our radiant sorrow or trace the secret transits of our joy? The traffic shimmers in its fixed trajectories, dense and indifferent as nebulae. Though you resist the gaudy spectacle, you can't resist the city's sortilege. Move away, if you wish, to the white Sierras, or huddle in the smoky canyons of Manhattan. You'll miss the juvenescent rapture of L.A., where ecstasy cohabits with despair, lascivious and fitful as a pair of lovers. Let someone else play grown-up. Here, the heart sings like a car radio, and no one asks your age, because we're all immortal. Inhale the spices of the midnight air, drifting from Thai town and little Armenia. Here on the hillside, the city whispers to you. Come down and play in the traffic. Merge into the moving lights, our myriad, the luminous multitudes that surround you. Join with us tonight to join their fiery orbit, shine with us tonight. Where else can you become a star? And the, the second poem is the one... Uh, uh, now, you know, now, if I was a nightclub singer, I could dedicate a song. So I'm going to dedicate this song to Barbara Jelpe, uh, because she quoted it. Uh, and so this is a psalm about 
the creation of Los Angeles. Of the 10 million people in, in Los Angeles County, there's probably 100 who can tell you how the sound was created. It, the, the town was founded by 44 outcasts. Uh, the, every couple was mixed race, uh, Spanish, uh, Aztec, California Indian, and African. And they really were, were given probably the, the least attractive piece of land in the Spanish Empire. Uh, it's right about where Union Station is right now. And there was this tiny river that went through it. But this was some place uh, actually to live. They're called Los Pobladores, you know, the, the people that made the Pueblo. Uh, and they named the city. Uh, I, I think we have a Franciscan in the audience, or has he left? Uh, because it was, they named it after uh, you know, the, the, the particular virgin of the, of the Franciscans, um, you know, the virgin of Portanchula. And so this recounts the story of, La, of the founding of Los Angeles and what's happened to Los Angeles. Psalm to Our Lady, Queen of the Angels. Let us sing to our city a new song, a song that remembers its name and its founders, Los Pobladores, the forgotten 44 who built their pueblo beside the small river. They named the river for the queen of the angels, Nuestra Señora Reina de Los Angeles. Poor, they were forced to the margins of empire, dark, dispossessed, not one of them pure. Let us praise the marriages and matings that created us, Desire swifter than democracy merging the races, Spanish, Aztec, African, and Anglo, forbidden matches made holy by children. I praise myself, a mutt of mestizo and mezzo giorno, the seed of exiles and violent men, disfigured by the burdens they shouldered to survive, broken or bent, their boast was their suffering. I praise my ancestors, the unkillable poor, the few who escaped disease or despair, the restless, the hungry, the stubborn, the scarred. Let us praise the dignity of their destitution. Let us praise their mother, Nuestra Señora, the lost guardian who watches them still from murals and medals, statues, tattoos. She has not abandoned her divided pueblo. She has been homeless with a hungry child, a refugee fleeing a brutal warlord, a mother she held her murdered son. Her crown is jeweled with seven sorrows. Pray for the city that lost its name. Pray for the people too humble for progress. Pray for the flesh that pays for the profit. Pray for the angels kept from their queen. Pray for the hour of our death each day in the southern sun of our desecrated city. Pray for us, mother of the mixed and misbegotten, beside our dry river and the tents of the outcast poor. you're doing a, a jazz album, you have to write a ballad. And so I, um, this ballad, I moved to New York City. Um, it's called The Stars on Second Avenue. Yeah. So, you know, I have so much respect for Dana and uh, wanted to write the perfect setting <laughs> for these words. It's an incredible poem. I must have written a hundred different melodies before settling on this one, and um, I hope you enjoy it. Christy, she will do the honors, but first let's hear Dana. 
You found the right one, Helen. <laughs> I'd say it was the stars reminded me of you, but I can't see the stars from Second Avenue. The, sh the shimmer is just neon reflected in the rain from the little corner deli where memory comes with pain. I'd say it was the moon that made me lose my head, but I never saw the moon in the window by our bed. It was just a street lamp shining in the dark above the empty bench in the empty park. I'd say it was the wine that eased my heavy soul, but I never take a drink. I never lose control. Maybe I should blame myself. Maybe just blame you. The stars won't tell me anything here on Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'd say it was the stars reminded me of you, but I can't see the stars from Second Avenue. Reflected in the rain from the corner deli, where memory comes with pain. I'd say it was the moon that made me lose my head, but I never saw the moon 
I'd say it was the wine that eased my heavy soul. But I never take a drink. stars won't tell me anything here on second avenue If you're going to do a jazz song cycle, you need an uh, up-tempo Latin number. Uh, this is one that could be New York, it could be L.A., but it's 98 degrees today in L.A., so I think we win. Uh, it's called Hot Summer Night. Let's go downtown. It's a hot summer night. Lovers are sitting in sidewalk cafes, making up, breaking up, hooking up, cooking up plans that would leave you amazed. Let's go downtown. It's a hot summer night. Let's not stay home and get in a fight. Let's eat spicy food in some dark little dive and let our bodies know we're alive. Summer is here. The young are on fire and every tattoo is a word for desire. They're strutting as naked as custom allows. They never say later, they only say now. Let's live in the flesh and not on a screen. Let's dress like people who want to be seen. Don't bring me home till the dawn's early light. Let's not waste this hot summer night.
Christy Shiel, John Ellis on tenor and flute, Guillermo Lopez on the bass, Quincy Davis on the drums. We want to thank the Catholic Imagination Conference. Thank you to Amber of Inspire Solu Solutions, our sound wizard, Dennis in the back, and of course, the man without who this music would not happen, Dana Joya. Have a great rest of the conference. Many blessings. And Helen Sung. Good night.